My guest today is Michael Sherrader. Michael, how are you? I'm doing well, David. How are you? I'm doing great. It was great to see you in Chicago last week, and it's great yeah. to see you virtually today. Yeah. What What do you do, Michael? So I am a technical program manager at Microsoft. Uh, I'm in our commercial software engineering team, and I work with companies in media and communication to help them build experiences and you and build ex in our in our cloud and edge. So basically, things on Azure, things in Microsoft 365, all the kind of things that our, our, our customers and partners who, who are building media experiences on you know, television, movies, and things like that, help them with, with their technology needs in moving to the cloud. That sounds very cool, but I don't want to talk about that today. Okay. I, I want to talk about your recent sabbatical. You went off, you took a break for a couple of months from your day job, and among other things, you built something cool. Yeah. Tell us about it. So um, I was... Uh, Bring it back to what 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 I just uh, did now. So I just saw you in Chicago, yeah. and when I travel, I take a journal with me. And so for me, that journal is something like this. It's a little leather bound journal. I, I get them in uh, from a craftsperson in Austin, Texas. I own a handcrafted books, and I fill these with with artwork. So I will I will do you know for all, um, the images from a trip to Hawaii. There are images, and and then I went to the Field Museum in Chicago. In, in Chicago, and I drew dinosaurs. I drew the Tribune building, there's, and then there's Sue place, right there. And I, I drew Sue, and so this is what I do for fun. But you know, if, if my media is like this, and I want to share it with people, I either have to do it digitally or or be sitting with them. And so, um, I've been doing this for thirty years. I've been keeping journals. I, in the, if you see the back of the shelf there; those are all my journals from the past thirty years. And this is what I do for fun, but it isn't an ex it isn't an art form that really exhibits that well in physical galleries. So um, I was uh, uh, I was cooped up like many of you the past couple of years at home. I first I did I sort of scanned in everything. I wanted to say, okay, what can I do if I scan in all the pages of all my journals and and scan them in? I, I scan them in in my favorite photo managing tool, uh, uh, Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. Basically, a way to organize photos. A lot of photographers, mainly used by photographers, but because of its its really great metadata tagging information, I can put a lot of information on these and organize these and really build a, a really cool data set. And what happened during the pandemic is Adobe gave the gave this um, data set API access. That meant that I, as a developer, can build a piece of software or a service that pulls data from my image set or allow me to pull data from others image set if they authorize it. And what I saw was a confluence of technologies. One of them is a like being able to do 3D technology on the web using a tool called Babylon JS. It's a JavaScript 3D library using uh, WebXR. I was able to create a website called Gallerist. And this site, um, it, it generates three-dimensional virtual galleries um, from Adobe Photoshop Lightroom albums. So if you, you as a photographer, um, you could say, I want to make a gallery of this album. It will do it in a couple seconds, and then you can share it with the world. So, you know, the uh, the uh, this is what I had the idea of, and I built during my sabbatical. I proposed this idea to uh, to uh, some people who I who I knew from Adobe, and they said, um, uh, put an application in for our uh, our Adobe Fund for Design. And I did. I put an application in, and I a couple months later they said, um, "We're going to give you a grant to uh, to help oh, you start this up." Nice. So for me, that was really cool. I wanted to use this as a way for me to learn some of the technologies that I've been working with or get more experience. And basically, this is all running on Win uh, on Microsoft Azure. It's using a bunch of Azure services. It uses some of these Adobe services. It uses uh, a bunch of a bunch of combining these technologies. And I was able to, in the course of this sabbatical build this site and i launched it in december of 2021 um and uh since then i've had hundreds of artists and photographers and schools uh create galleries using this and it's That's been so cool. wonderful to see everything that people have created and i actually saw that you created a gallery um the other day I and, did. Uh, can i can i show people your gallery sure so why don't you switch over to that screen let's see uh here so what I'm going to go to, what I'm going to show you is this is the front page of Gallerist. Yep. And um, I, I should point out that I, I used the free version of it. So yep. I 
just signed up in five minutes and started doing this. So you uh, you sign up with an Adobe. Anybody with an Adobe ID can 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 create a gallery. Um, they actually have to use uh, they use have to have a, 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 at least one album in, in Lightroom to okay. create the gallery. But what I'm going to show you is is a, a gallery that my friend David Girard did. And so I just see that he created this gallery called Croatia. That's from my vacation last year in Croatia. So I'm going to view the work and then I'm going to actually launch the foyer of that gallery. And it's basically downloading a model right now that I can see of this gallery that this is a foyer. If I had more, right now this is a foyer of a gallery with a single wing in it. Mm. And in this case, to go into that wing, I'll just click on this image right here. And it takes me into this three-dimensional gallery that if I click on any piece of artwork, I'll see that, that artwork. I can go to this next one. This guy's a good photographer. I can then start go through all the different images. That is so cool. And it is not to, uh, you know, he has his, you have all of your imagery in Lightroom today. You can share a gallery, uh, share an album in Lightroom very easily, the, the cloud version of Lightroom. And this is just another way of creating an experience to share your gallery with the world, to share it with an audience in a way that they could view this on a phone, or they could view this in a, in, a, in a VR headset. So if I had a VR headset right now, I could then see this in a in a immersive headset. Oh, that would be very cool. Uh, yeah, and so it's it give it uh, it will then show you what you can do in that gallery, and then other people have created galleries. Um, this, for example, you know we can see people are using this for just sharing NFT images. So uh, if you are a uh, if you're a subscriber, so we have different subscriber levels that anybody can have a free gallery, a uh, single free gallery, but then you can then subscribe. And at the subscriber levels, you can then add links to your artwork. And that link can be to a video of how you made it. It could be a link to an NFT token, the URL and the NFT. It could be a link to your to uh, your commerce site. So I'm not doing any commerce on behalf of customers, but right. they are more than welcome to do commerce on their own. So for example, uh, one of the artists uh, who, who has a number of, of galleries, Jeremy Janis. If I look at him, he's a great photographer, does a huge amount of nature photography. Um, if I look at his gallery, um, which is th this this most amazing nature photography that I love, that uh, if you look at each one of these these pieces of artwork, there's a link to it right here, and this takes you directly to his commerce site where you can buy it. Oh, I see. Very so nice. this is a feature that is available to people who not on the free version, but uh, a person who is a subscriber, mm -hmm. which is you know incredibly affordable. You can pay for it on a month to month basis. You can do it on a yearly basis with with more, or you can do it if you want a bunch of galleries. And so one of the fun things I've seen is that some of the people who have, have um, uh, who are institutions. So I'm seeing institutions like um, like a school in uh, uh, in uh, in Indonesia, uh, oh. the uh, school in. Uh, uh, in the port of Spain, I think this is in um, uh, Trinidad and Tobago. They have a school for every one of the, you know, for their grade six, grade seven, for the middle school, and they're sharing their artwork um, in, from, from 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 their students. Oh, I love it! And for you know, for global that. adoption of this thing. Yeah, and so it's so much fun for me as a person who who sort of enabled this, enabled these artists, enabled these photographers, enabled these schools to have a gallery and share their artwork with the world. So it's, it's, it's a, uh, um, I'm able to do this by, uh, you know, uh, uh, by, by, uh, by having the, subscri the subscription plans uh, so that people can then, you know, create galleries and really show them off to the world and do this in a, in a fun way. And then when you, when you do have a gallery, you can then customize it um, uh, and, and add different options like different, different, uh, Different walls, different uh, different ceiling types. So it's all basically a, a generator uh, of these galleries, so that you can then set different options on them. Uh, so examples of different options is you may have uh, cards next to them. So you have, you have keywords set up in the uh, in the gallery in Lightroom. You can then do uh, do a tour of everything that has a certain keyword. Um, and then if if we look at the if we look at each of the wings or the foyer, uh, you have different options that you have around the uh around the type of floor you have different options around let me draw it like this uh the different floor textures wall textures ceiling types you know uh all the kind of options that you might have to make the to customize the gallery to be suitable for your type of artwork 
Very cool. Uh, tell me a little bit more about the technology you used. You mentioned Babylon JS. Uh, it's hosted on Azure, and there's an API that Adobe pro provides to access the Lightning. So the, that yeah, so, what else? Yeah, so it's it's it uses the the Azure App Service, which runs a co the code is running on Node JS. I wrote all the code in TypeScript, so I have TypeScript running on both the client code and JavaScript running uh, Babylon JS, which is just a JavaScript uh, 3D framework. And then all the code in the back end is using uh, using Node.js JavaScript uh, compiled from TypeScript. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that is accessing the uh, Azure services uh, via uh, via the Azure JavaScript APIs. And then also accessing uh, Stripe. So I use Stripe for my commerce. So Sorry, I'm, I'm not familiar with Stripe. What is that? So Stripe is, a, is an API where I can do commerce and create subscription plans uh, available um, uh, or subscription or, or digital product plans or even you know, even sell products uh, and integrate it with with my site. And so it was incredibly easy. They had great support. And uh, basically, I'll, I'll get, uh, you know, uh, you know I, I get a, a good percentage of the uh, of, of the of the money that comes in from these artist plans. And they basically I can have a monthly recurring billing happening. Uh, people can can cancel at any time. For example, the easiest one is like monthly three ninety nine a month. Um, and then they'll, you know, as, as any credit card processor, they'll take a cut, but I get the that vast majority of this money. Uh, and, and, uh, it then uh, pays for the, uh, the consumption that I'm running on, uh, on Microsoft Azure, uh, to, to run this. What was the biggest challenge of building this? The biggest challenge was, um, managing the complexity. Um, it is, uh, you know, as, as a piece of software grows and gets more complex, Managing the complexity that when I make one change, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't um, uh, it doesn't break something else. So I, I I went incredibly rapidly to build this and get it out there. I didn't build all my tests for all this, and I was noticing there was some stability issues. And so I went through. Actually, had uh, earlier this year, like everybody else, I, I had a, I had a, I was isolating with COVID. I was not feeling bad, but I had to stay away from everybody else. During mm -hmm. that time, I built hundreds of unit tests on my on my, on my, on my Node code to basically cover it. And then I saw my stability and you know, it, it uncovered some errors and I found my stability uh, plateau at it. You know, I'm not, no, no more crashing. And it's, you know, I'm seeing that and it's uh, I'm, I'm really happy where, where how, how it's gone. But, you know, that, that challenge of managing, uh, you know, adding features, managing and managing complexity and not breaking things when you add features, it's a big challenge. And it was, it was, you know, since it's only me doing the engineering, it's I'm responsible for all the features and also all the bugs. All right. Uh, we call that um, test eventually development. By exactly. the way. That, so, that, yeah. <laughs> now that I have all these unit tests, I'm so much more confident in my ability to add features. I know I'm not breaking things that are that are important to my to my my customers. So this is a uh, you are adding features. This is a living application. Do you have a yeah. roadmap of what's coming? Not really a roadmap. Um, I, I I do have a GitHub repo where where people are are putting in their feature requests. One of the things that I'm really want to add in so, is some better user analytics. So, so that, you know, right now it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, if I, if I look at your, if anybody looks at the gallery, um, you can see, for example, um, let's just do your gallery right here. Uh, you can see a little bit of the analytics, uh, but what I'd like to be able to show you is how people are navigating through your gallery. You know, this is something that you could not do really well in a physical gallery, but it would be something that I want to do is like people are navigating through the galleries and I want to show an, uh, a gallerist like you, how people are, are, are walking through your gallery. What are they lingering on? What are they Absolutely. finding interesting? What are they clicking on? So that's the kind of thing that I that I want. It's, of course, it's it's a it's a quite a sophisticated feature because I want to visualize how you're walking through it. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I've been working on in, in sort of the, the 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 time that I've had. You know, when I when I was working on this during my sabbatical, it was my my nine to five. I was able to devote all my time to working on this. Now it's moved to more to my five to nine. This is now. <laughs> I'll work on it in the evenings and weekends when I when I have time, uh, and then you know I'll, I'll see you know people can uh, uh, post support issues. I'll see what those issues are, and then I'm you know, I'm watching all my metrics and watching out all the analytics and things like that. So, uh, the, you know, for the first couple of months, the main my main goal was getting stability, making sure I'm not crashing, making sure that, that people are making sure people are able to create galleries, making sure it's working for them, and and, and I'm not getting support issues around that anymore. So I'm really happy. So a free user sees there's value in becoming a subscriber and a subscriber sees there's value in continuing to have a gallery. That's excellent. Um, and the, the, the site is at 
gallerist g-a-l-e-r-y-s-t dot com that's it and um uh people can sign up there for free is there something anything else we want to talk about this that we haven't shared yet that that's really the key to it it, it is a uh it, it is a free site you basically you can you can create anybody can create a you know you can browse galleries for free you know as as, as a viewer uh that's that's available anybody can make a gallery that, to make it public to make it um they can make a gallery um that is uh, hidden so they only can get to it from a link that somebody gives you or you can make it only visible to yourself during you know when you're doing testing when you're when you you yeah, want to yeah. create a gallery uh, that you don't want others to see that's sort of these three different access levels and and you know up, up till now we have uh, more than more than 400 almost 500 people have uh, created galleries uh, to date and Congratulations. Uh, yeah it's, it's exciting so just see uh, what people create and, and, and where they're coming from all over the world so uh, the fun thing to see is uh, really look at the map of, of all the artwork. So uh, clicking on this map page, I can see that a lot of this is my artwork, mm -hmm. uh, but then I can start seeing like one of the ones is really neat here is that um, we'll start seeing across. Oh, look, there's me in Chicago. Yeah. And so what, what the interesting thing is that this artist right here that I think I, I, I talked about uh, Jeremy Janis, he has created a uh, uh he's done around route 66 he's created a bunch of images oh, around yeah. his travels through route 66 and you can start seeing where those images are so this is uh, the metadata from lightroom exactly. where That's the photos exactly. were taken not yeah, where the artist david schneider so you can choose to make your locations accessible uh or you can choose not to that's a choice as a as as a you as a as a gallery owner or a gallery user you can you can choose so david schneider a different photographer he's really done route 66 in a really cool way that you can start seeing these this journey that he's taking you on and That's then right. it, it winds from chicago to la yeah isn't more that cool? than 2000 miles all and then i start seeing i know people let's see I, croatia scroll down let's see <laughs> so down by uh, between italy and greece yeah uh, it looks like i probably don't have the metadata exposed because croatia uh, is empty so it's probably showing up in chicago I think you do, but um, yeah, it, it's it's an option that you have. You can choose choose to or not to to do that. So, it's it's been really fun seeing how people have uh, are, are choosing to, to share their 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 artwork and choose to share their photography. Excellent. Well, Michael, this is really fascinating. I hope you have nothing but success with it. Thank you so much, David. And thanks for sharing your time. Stay safe. You too. Gallerist has helped me use technology to share my galleries with my friends and help my friends share galleries with their friends.